IR35 for Dummies. Despite the title of this video, if you are watching it, it is quite likely that you are a rather articulate person and probably with a high skill level. However, despite this, like most people facing a change in their working style, they are faced with something that is new. If the person that you are going to work for asks you to operate through a limited company rather than as an employee or a sole trader, you need to consider very carefully the implications of the provision of the infamous tax legislation referred to as IR35. This video is an attempt to simplify the features of IR35 as a starting point for you to consider if this applies to you. It is however no substitute for detailed advice relating to your specific circumstances. You should always seek your own professional advice before taking any action. The background to IR35. Over the years there's been a growing trend for businesses wanting to avoid having their workforce as employees. Instead they have preferred to use the services of self-employed individuals as this reduces the cost to them as they avoid employers national insurance and it also avoids many of the legal issues that are related to employment. There has been a history of HMRC challenging the status of self-employed subcontractors. This posed a significant threat to the businesses that use the services of such subcontractors. Should they lose the argument with HMRC about the status of the individuals working for them, then they would incur a substantial liability for tax and national insurance that should have been payable if they had been treated as employees in the first instance. As a consequence of this, businesses reacted by requiring their subcontractors to operate through a company which removed the status threat from them. It was as a consequence of the significant loss of revenue that HMRC faced by this trend that IR35 was introduced. Status a central issue that underlies IR35 is the actual status of the workers involved. Are they really self-employed? Or are they really employees just pretending to be self-employed? There's no legal definition of what an employee is, but there's a great number of legal cases that have established the criteria that define status. There are many factors that it is necessary to consider, but each case has to be taken on its own merits. No one factor is conclusive in establishing status, as all the relevant factors need to be considered in the round. The ones that have a status that are definitely employed, and the ones that are definitely self-employed, are usually obvious. Many, however, fall into the grey area of uncertainty which lies between these alternatives. This creates the background of uncertainty that makes IR35 such a problem. IR35 is applicable in all cases where the argument about status would be lost and the worker would be considered on balance to be an employee rather than a genuinely self-employed person. When does IR35 apply? Where the relationship between the worker and the end user is one of employment, then the end user takes the risk of the relationship if they pretend that the worker is self-employed, when in reality, based upon the facts, they should be employees. IR35 applies where an intermediary body, usually a limited company, is introduced into the relationship between the worker and the end user. The worker operates through the limited company who in turn invoices the end user or perhaps another body in between such as an agency or an umbrella company. 
Where such an arrangement exists, and the true nature of the relationship is effectively that of an employee, then IR35 applies. What is the effect of IR35? Where it applies, the earnings paid from the end user to the intermediary body must be subject to PAYE after a small deduction of 5% and after the deduction of any expenses that any employee would be able to claim. This compels a significant amount of the income earned to be subject to tax plus employees national insurance plus employers national insurance. This means a substantial amount of tax and national insurance would be payable. If the provisions of IR35 are ignored and the company is used to pay a minimum salary and dividends to reduce the tax liability, then there is likely to be a big difference between the tax actually paid and the amount that should have been paid had IR35 been applied. As the years go by, this amount gets bigger and bigger. This puts the company at great risk. However, if the company fails to pay over the tax and national insurance required by IR35, then if HMRC find out about the situation, they can go to the end worker and demand it from them. By the time they do this, the amount due can be considerable. The end effect is that the risk has been passed from the end user down to the intermediary body and ultimately onto the end worker if an intermediary body is introduced in a situation deemed to be akin to an employment. If you are asked to operate through a limited company, you need to be aware of the significant tax costs that you will face due to IR35 and the substantial risk should you ignore it. As the risk you will face is considerable, you should always seek professional advice from an accountant who fully understands IR35 and its consequences. Thus, if you are asked to operate through a limited company, be on your guard, take care and seek advice. If you think IR35 might apply to you and you would like to discuss the situation with us, please telephone us on 01226 245824. We would be delighted to speak to you. Thank you.